Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today something a little bit different instead of working on a radio we're going to be working on this Zitagi BV131 valve linear amplifier that I bought so yes valve equipment we all know valve equipment and we all know that it is dangerous because of high voltages big capacitors etc now many many years ago I did used to work on TV sets so I'm quite well aware of high voltage but I must say that repairing these is dangerous if you don't know what you're doing there is high voltages which will definitely wake you up if you go if you go across them and even worse maybe so be it on your own risk should you go inside one of these and start messing about because yes they are dangerous but anyway let's get to it so here's the amplifier that i bought off ebay unfortunately it has a problem and you're probably thinking where's the valve well yeah the valve didn't survive shipping unfortunately the seller did message me and say oh yeah i put bubble wrap inside to protect the valve but unfortunately it didn't put very well packing around and it was sent by one of those really reputable um package companies and when i got it the valve was toast basically you can see there a pin has snapped off and the actual anode cap had come off as well now i've glued that back on because i want to use this as a display but we have one pin missing i think that's a date code of 86 it's an el 508 shame but maybe i was going to replace the valve anyway because if this is 1986 you don't know what hard life it's had but anyway one of my good buddies from the facebook group has sent me a care package for this so we have a couple of brand new rectifier diodes some higher powered ones to replace the ones in it and we have a selection of valves so we have the thinner type 519 and we have the standard sized el509 and we have a russian version which are abundant the 6n45c which is near enough a direct replacement and that's going to be our, our weapon of choice today we're going to fit this nice russian valve in there so yeah big thanks to chris for sending these out to me I couldn't have done it without you so let's check the capacitors make sure they're not holding any charge because these things hold charge for a long time after being switched off and especially with no bleed resistors in them and yep capacitors are dead so they're safe to work on you should always check your capacitors because they will hold charge for a very long time so to get these capacitors out we're going to need to get the mains transformer out of the way like so just being careful with it i did notice one of the actual leads was crushed as well must have been from the factory but anyway get rid of this cable tie and let's get these old crusty capacitors out so we've desoldered them and they look crusty and they are most definitely crusty this one seems to have stuff growing on the underside of it so yeah good call getting rid of these now i've not even switched this amplifier on since i've got it because i wanted to do all this to it so there's our crusty capacitors out we'll get rid of those so i've already ordered some replacements some nice axial capacitors there 
47 mic, 500 volts, should do nicely. So, a couple of pounds off eBay for those. Jobs are good. And so let's get those rectifiers out. Replace them with some slightly better ones. Even though they're going to be doing the same job, I've been recommended that I change them. So, that's what I'm going to do. So there they are, there's the two little small rectifiers down the bottom. So they probably are working, but I've not tested them. Now the diodes have got slightly thicker legs, so I just need to make the holes a bit bigger for the legs. And that should make them fit in quite nicely as such perfect fit and there's our new rectifier diodes fitted and soldered into place so we're going to change a couple of other capacitors this one thousand mic 16 volt so we're going to change that one because it's probably been in there for the lifetime of the unit And we're going to clean the contacts in the relay with some switch cleaner. So it means I have to get the relay open, which was a little bit of a pain, but we managed to do it in the end. So I've sprayed some switch cleaner onto the contacts. Now, as a stupidity prevention, should we say, I want to fit bleed resistors across these caps. It won't affect the working of the amp but it will make it so it will bleed the capacitors away should it ever needs to be opened again and you completely forget that there's charged voltage in there so that's those fitted in nicely and last thing we're going to replace that grain of wheat bulb with the crep bulb which is a 12 volt 100 milliamp just need to solder a couple of leads onto that bulb and we'll put it into place like so. Now, next thing, let's get that Russian valve in there. So lining it up with the base, holding the back of the board, putting it, putting it snugly into place. And then we'll put the anode cap back on like so so there's our amplifier all back together again now i've measured the mains transformer i am getting a reading across it so it's not open circuit but we're just going to check inside the plug make sure there's not a 13 amp nail in there and it's wired correctly Because I do want a little bit of protection should anything go wrong when I switch it on for the first time. And switching it on for the first time is round about now. So I've loosely put the case back on it just in case anything explodes. We have a light behind the meter. And a few seconds later we can see a nice glow from the heater inside the valve. So something is definitely working. So I left it on for a few seconds. No bangs, no explosions, no magic smoke. So I think we can go to our F test. So fortunately I've only got a 100 watt dummy load. So I'm going to have to um, be careful of what I put into this. But we should be able to run it at a peak just for a split second. So let's see what it can do. So we'll switch it on. We'll let her warm up. 
So I'm going to be using my Mark 1 Cobra for this. And I've got access to the variable power control inside. So I can set the correct amount of power to test both the power ranges for this because there's a switch on the back so we're going to be putting a couple of watts in at first and we'll see what happens so we're on the two watt scale we're on about one and a half watts we'll just check we'll just check the SWR make sure the dummy load is working and it is so we're just under one and a half watts there put it up to the 200 watt scale flick standby off and yeah about about 20 22 watts there from just under one and a half watts drive so we're definitely working so time to increase it a little bit more and let's have a look so we've got four watts in now It just slams my needle off the edge of the scale. No, it's just off scale there, but we've got about, about 50, 55 watts there. No, oh, seems to be holding that well. Now we'll put it onto the 10 watt input at the back and readjust. I completely forgot to do the tune as well. So we've adjusted the tune now. So yeah, it's definitely producing. Put it back down to the um, four watt input. Readjust it all again. We'll try and whistle on sideband. Getting a nice, getting a nice peak there. Very nice. So let's try it on my digital meter. So 86 watts there with four watts in. Very nice. Very nice indeed. We'll try some sideband. I can't drive it much more than this because the dummy load is only rated for 100 watts and at this point the dummy load is now starting to get a little bit toasty but it's definitely working and these are the parts we've changed so a couple of capacitors diodes the big capacitors bulb put some bleed resistors in and excellent very nice so here's the 131 finished so this will be a nice addition to my shack as we would say with it being a tuned unit should produce a nice clean um, RF should we say anyway stay safe don't put your fingers in these if you don't know what you're doing thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe join the Facebook group buy me a coffee and we'll see you in the next episode.